Hi everyone, thank you for joining me for another Lessons from an Old Quilt and I have a beauty for you today. Before we start looking at it, my name is Chris O'Neill from So The Distance. Thank you so much for joining me today. So this quilt is a real gem. It is a pinwheel quilt. It's a real simple construction, but it is placed on point, meaning that the block is turned so the points of the block are at the top and bottom. It does give a really cool look to a quilt in a simple block like this. It really elevates it. Well, definitely talk about that when we take a closer look. So this quilt measures around 80 by 92, making it a nice twin size quilt. My parents purchased it for me at a yard sale and paid $35 for this incredible find. So let's get started taking a closer look at this vintage pinwheel quilt. So like I said in the introduction, this was set on point, meaning it was turned. We can see the block right here. And it's basically a nine patch. In fact, I'm gonna twist it a little so we can get a better look at it and understand it a little bit more. So I'm gonna put it as if it were sewn together in a straight way, straight setting. So you can see that there are nine patches. Four of them are solid and five of them are pinwheel blocks that are made up of half square triangles. And it really gives a cool look. It's a pretty easy block to make because you're just doing pinwheels and solids. But when you set them on point like this, it gives it, I don't know, a elevated look or a different, more sophisticated block. It almost looks like it's more complicated than it actually is. And just so you can see it a little bit better, I did make one. I made it in some bright fabrics so you can get an idea of how it was constructed. There are four half square triangles in each of the pinwheel blocks. There are five pinwheel blocks within this block. That makes a grand total of 20 half square triangles in this particular block. And then four of the solids. Now between each of the blocks, we do see a solid block. So when it was put together, and I know this is a little confusing, so bear with me here. It was put together as solid, pinwheel, solid, and it just kept alternating throughout this quilt. Within this entire quilt, there are 30 pinwheel blocks, these blocks, or this block, and there are 20 solid blocks. So there's quite a few, and when you add it all up, there are 600 half square triangles in this entire quilt which is pretty outstanding. So let's talk about these fabrics. This is what I would call a controlled scrappy quilt because we do have the greens and yellows, and I believe they were greens and yellows. They could have faded over time. In fact, I think they did fade over time, but let's call them greens and yellows. So this being the yellow fabric and this being the green fabric. And then within that, there are scrap pinwheel blocks. Some of the pinwheel blocks use the same fabrics for all the half square triangles like here, and some of them have just a mix. But what is really interesting is that there are pops of red every so often throughout this quilt. And I think that's really something that makes this quilt sparkle because we do see just pops here and there of that color and it really is a neat, neat aspect of it. There are many repeated pinwheel fabrics, so I'm sure that they were distributed on purpose like that. And it just gives a really cool scrappy yet not look to this quilt. Each block is machine pieced. In fact, this entire thing is machine pieced, but it is hand quilted. So let's talk about that now. This hand quilting oh, is spectacular. So you can see in the solid blocks here, there's this circle flower with scallops all around. But in these blocks, the pinwheel blocks, it is just a straight line stitching. This is all done by hand and is just incredible. What's really neat is that we see this circle almost go underneath these pinwheels, giving this interesting look to this. In the corners, we see quarter medallions or flowers. And then of course at the tops here, we see half flowers or medallions. And then this incredible serpentine or rope pattern on the borders. I just, it's so, so beautiful. Even the corners that are mitered right here, you can see it ended and started very well. Now, you may or may not have noticed that around each block and in the borders is this stitch. It's the stretch blind hem stitch. It took me a while to figure out what stitch this is, but I'm 99% sure that's what it is. And this maker used it as a decorative stitch. She used green thread 
and put that into the quilt. Now, I believe the green was stitched on prior to the hand quilting, so it may have even acted as a basting, which is really neat because we do see it on the back. It comes right through to the back, which gives another overall pattern on the back which is really cool too. So let's turn it over and take a look at the back. So you can see how beautiful this quilting really shines on the back and you get a good idea of that straight stitch quilting here that goes into this medallion quilting here. And you see that stretch blind hem stitch coming through. So I really do think that the maker basted it together using that. How smart, especially when it comes to hand quilting. I can just see the maker sitting there hand quilting this and not really worrying about puckers because it's all stabilized with this blind hem stitch. It's ingenious. So the back itself is pieced together, but it is solid white. It's using the same fabric and it is pulled around to the front for the binding and then hand attached down onto the front. So let's talk about the condition because the condition is not great. There are a lot of stains. In fact, I believe this quilt might've been used in a garage, which always breaks my heart. We can see there's paint here and here and here. There's a giant stain on the back that actually goes through to the front. So if we look at the front here, you can see this big giant stain. And then in the middle, there is a lot of wear, which we can see here. And there's a few blocks like this all across the middle. Now, I believe I can repair this. I don't think it's gonna be a huge deal to repair it, but it does make me sad. One thing I wanna point out though, is the fabric is what broke down, not the threads. The threads are intact. And you may have heard this before, thread does seem to hold up really well, even the old threads and the fabric's what breaks down. And this is a good example of that. You can see, of course, the batting coming through here. This is a polyester batting, which tells me that this quilt was at least constructed, meaning put together, sandwiched together after the 1950s when polyester batting was invented. So that's a good clue on the age of this quilt. These fabrics, some of them are really old. That could be blocks that were found, or it could be somebody's stash, or the blocks themselves and could be older blocks that somebody put together later on. All of these things are a possibility. If I had to guess, I'd say this was constructed maybe in the 1960s, but you know, I don't know for sure. And I'm not an appraiser, so I am totally going on a gut in the knowledge that I have about quilts. We do see some color discrepancies, but I think that has to do more with fading than anything else. Either way, this is just such a beautiful quote and we can learn so much from the maker on this one. And now for my favorite part where we talk about everything we can learn or some things that we can learn from the maker of this quilt as modern quilters. So one thing that we can take from this maker and put into our own quilt making is that decorative stitch. So even if your machine doesn't have any decorative stitches, chances are that it has some other stitches like a blind hem stitch or a zigzag or something like that. This maker used the stretch blind hem stitch as a decoration on this quilt. What a great idea. And that brings me to my next lesson. What a neat idea for basting the quilt. So when you're getting ready to hand stitch a quilt or even machine stitch a quilt, why not consider using some sort of stitch, decorative or not, or a decorative stitch that wasn't meant to be decorative or whatever to stay stitch your sandwich together and stabilize it. I don't know, this just blew my mind because if this is what happened, I mean, how, how smart is that? Why didn't I think of that before? It gives another element to this quilt on the front and the back and it holds it together really well. So smart. And finally, that red fabric. I had to really study this quilt to figure out what was making it sparkle, what was making it super special, at least for me when I looked at it. It took me a bit to figure out that it was that red fabric. Without it, it would have been a beautiful quilt, no doubt. But that red fabric just brought the pizzazz to this quilt. It made it spectacular. I love it. I hope I can remember and I hope I can take that technique into my own quilting because what a great idea. It's distributed so nicely. I don't know if it was done on purpose or not, but either way, it's so pleasing to the eye and it just, it makes you happy to look at it. And I love that. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Lessons from an Old Quilt. If you did, please give me that thumbs up. And if you'd like to, please consider commenting below. I will see you soon. Have a great day and make sure you take some time to sew. Bye.